from Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TA. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. This story from the San Jose Mercury News. I know many of you would like uh, to know what to do after your big divorce, since I'm such a big advocate. You know me, I'm a big divorce advocate. That's right. Kick her the hell out. And you know why you need to kick her out? Because she's getting fat and lazy. She's not performing. She's not giving you what you need, not giving you what you want. Time to kick her the hell out. And the San Jose Mercury News has got advice for you if you're getting a divorce. Here we go. Recently divorced singles face a slew of dating challenges that their never-been-hitched counterparts seldom endure. From where to find appropriate men and women to how to get their dating game on, there is much for the newly single to relearn. There were 23 million divorced people in the United States in 2005, according to the U.S. Census. With many of these divorced men and women looking to reconnect, we enlisted relationship and dating experts at the San Jose Mercury News to provide 10 tips on re-entering the dating pool without drowning. Here are the tips. Number one, don't dive in too quickly just to forget about an unsuccessful marriage. If you have unresolved issues that cause problems during your married life, don't think they won't resurface with the new honey. Fix yourself up before you get fixed up, says Susan Shapiro, author of Secrets of a Fix-Up Fanatic. By the way, you know how I have handled divorce? By sleeping with as many women as possible. I mean without any discrimination whatsoever. I don't care old and young and any ethnicity, any background, rich and poor, if it would spread its legs, I was going in for a landing. That's it. That's how you get over it. You don't sit home and feel sorry for yourself or wondering what your ex is doing. You need to do so much stuff that your ex's hair would curl. Then you don't worry about what the ex is doing. Do you think I'm concerned about what my exes are doing right now? Couldn't care less. Tip number two from the San Jose Mercury News if you're getting divorced. Ask what you learned about yourself from the previous relationship. Is it tough to trust someone new? Are you repeating behavior that got you into trouble in the first place? Are you choosing the same type of person? Bill Lamb, licensed marriage and family therapist in San Jose, says, My feeling is if you can't think of anything, give yourself some more time to figure it out. Otherwise, you're very likely to get stuck in the same place again. See, the problem you had when you got married is that you got married. That's behavior you don't want to be repeating. I repeated that behavior and I lived to regret it. Now I finally figured out the key to happiness. Stop getting married. Number three, consider a physical makeover. Think about changing your hairstyle, updating your wardrobe, or trying out a new pair of glasses. If you're a guy, lose the baseball cap. (laughs) Jesus. 
Are you listening, Vladimir Guerrero? If you're a woman and you want to meet a guy, get out of the plaid jumper and put on that sexy black dress, says Susan Shapiro, aforementioned. And for the love of micro minis, it says, please dress your age. Of course, if you have to worry about dressing your age, most of us guys aren't interested in you anyway. All right? Number four, don't limit yourself to bars, online dating sites, or speed dating events. They're often dominated by youngish singles who emphasize looks over substance and experience. Hey, most guys do that. We're not going dating to hear your political opinions. We're imagining what's under that plaid jumper. You know what I'm saying? I want to get my hands on that. Forget all the conversation. Do I really need to know who you think is going to win the presidential election in 08? I couldn't care less like you would know. I just want to nail you. Says here, unless you can pass for Jessica Alba or Johnny Depp, you're setting yourself up for rejection and hurt feelings. The upside of avoiding bars, no need to blend in by ingesting stomach-turning energy drinks. Who wrote this? This is somebody 75 years old. Who wrote this story? Are you kidding me? Going to bars, seeing chicks getting loaded, you know they're going to do something they're going to regret for the rest of their lives. You want to be in on that. You kidding me? Number five, follow your passion by getting involved with an organization, a volunteer group, or by enrolling in a class. Into hiking, join the Sierra Club. Like literature, sign up for a book group. You know how many hot chicks are in those book groups. Do chicks read books? You know, just like the old joke by Groucho, by Groucho Marx about not wanting to join any club that would have him as a member. You know, any book club that has chicks in it, these are chicks you don't want to be dating. If a chick picks up a book, I can tell you right now, that's not what you're looking for. Women read books because they're not hot enough to have dates. From sporting events to political rallies to helping out at a literacy center. Yeah, you'll be finding somebody really hot at the literacy center. Activities allow you to meet people who share your interest in a less threatening environment. You see, I want women in a threatening environment. I want them to feel pressure. This idea that, oh, it's just lunch, it's just drinks, it's just dinner. No, 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 no. I want you to feel pressure to perform. I don't want you in a less threatening environment. Number six, this one I agree with. Develop friendships. This is arguably more important than lining up that first post-divorce date. I do believe that when you get divorced, you should uh, rediscover the friends you've been avoiding because you were in love. Oh, honey, I don't want to answer that. That's going to be my friend, and he's got tickets to the Laker game. Oh, I don't want to pick up the phone. Oh, I just want to be with you all day. Jesus Christ. Save me. Yes, it says this is, uh, once again, the marriage and family therapist, Bill Lamb, he says... I can think of a lot of divorced clients who had no other relationships, no friends other than their spouse. Friends provide a support system as well as a handy means to yank off your rose-colored glasses. Again, this person has to be 75 years old who wrote this. They also undermine, help undermine the temptation to jump into a relationship when what you really want is to fill the friendship void. Don't make the mistake of trying to make a partner, a confidant, a best friend, and a shriek. You know why? Because the chicks you're dating are not your best friend or your confidant. They're going to repeat everything you say, and they're going to tell every shortcoming you have to anybody who will listen, preferably with you with an earshot. You can't tell a chick anything. Why would you want to? That's why I don't like having them living in my house. 
I just don't like it. Tip number seven, if you're getting divorced from the San Jose Mercury News, open yourself up to individuals who aren't your type. No, this doesn't mean you have to get cozy with Quasimodo in the Raiders jersey. But if you're looking for a partner, you're playing a numbers game. <laughs> Shapiro says you can't overfocus on one date. Think of what you go through when you're looking for an apartment or a job. Sometimes it's the 30th option that works for you. No, the problem... I disagree with this, too. The problem is that most people... First of all, the word single, I object to it, and I don't use it to describe myself. I am unmarried. I am not single. Single people are people who are desperate to not be single anymore. They're desperate to get married. Are you kidding me? Oh, I'm going on a date. Maybe this one will be the one. Shut up! The reason for going on a date is to get laid, you dork. Who cares if you ever marry this person? Who cares if you could stand to have children with them? Are you kidding? Forget it. You want to go out and figure out how to get laid in the least amount of time with the least amount of money spent. That's it. All these people I know, all these guys who are just completely pussy-whipped. They go out, they rent a limousine, they get flowers, they get champagne. They say, oh, we're going to go to a great red. We're going to go to Patina tonight. We're going to go to Providence tonight. We're going to go to the best restaurant in town. The best. And then they come home empty-handed and they can't figure out why. It's because they spent too much money and time preparing. You go out there, you suss out the situation, and if you think she's not going to put out, cut your losses. Number eight, these are the uh, tips for people who are getting a divorce. It's what to do next from the San Jose Mercury News. I love this. Don't leave your brain at home. <laughs> Unless you're a woman. We don't really want to hear what's in there. When looking for a connection, don't ignore red flags. Trust your instincts. If it doesn't feel right or safe, it probably isn't. Now, this cannot be a piece of advice for a man. Also, consider grabbing coffee rather than alcohol on the first date. <laughs> I, I, I have banned coffee dates. There are no coffee dates in my life. None. says here, when your judgment is unclouded, warning signs are easier to spot. Number nine, again, pussified advice here. If you have kids, don't assume that you're now the leper of the dating realm. Yes, you are. In fact, I think if you had leprosy, you'd have a better chance of getting laid. Because I don't want to pay for your kids. If you, if, I'll tell you what. If there are any lepers out there but you're child-free, call me immediately. I'd rather be with a hot leper than a single mother. I'll tell you right now. When you ask these people to give you a hand, sometimes they literally do. You can bet Cupid's left cheek that plenty of other single parents are also on the market and can't get a date. I, I added that part. If your date's interest suddenly wanes when he or she learns you have children, move on. Why? If the purpose is getting laid, why should we care if you have children? Why should we be interested in your children? Most of your children are nothing but a bunch of goddamn mistakes that you made because you didn't have time to go to the drugstore, so you said, what the hell, let's ride bareback. Let's face it. Most people didn't plan in some loving, romantic way to bear children. You know what I'm saying? They had a condom with an expiration date of December 99. And number 10, love doesn't make you happy. Pursuing the things you love is a far better prescription for contempt. But that's great. That way, if you never get married, you'll be content forever. Because you'll be pursuing what you love without actually moving it into your house says here, work on figuring out what makes you excited about getting up in the morning. You'll likely be happier 
And contented adults are far more alluring than their crusty, embittered counterparts. I've been telling you, living alone was the best thing I ever did for myself. The best thing. And I do agree with the fact that people should spend their time doing what they love. Unfortunately, we rarely marry people who like what we like, who do what we want to do. Why anchor yourself down with somebody like that, for Christ's sake? Seriously. Now, these are the San Jose Mercury News' tips. If you're getting a divorce, this is what you should do next, according to the San Jose Mercury News. Now, I, on the other hand, I have a little different perspective on this, having been married and divorced four times. Because I say the tips are pretty simple. When you get divorced, bang as many chicks as you can. And if your ex-wife's best friend is available and you've always wanted to hit that, hit it immediately. That's that's one tip, okay? Uh, another tip, don't give anybody your keys. Don't give anybody your ATM card. Don't uh, sort of joint bank accounts with, with checks, with pictures of cute little puppy dogs and kitty cats on or anything like that. Forget it. Don't be having babies with people. Hit it with a condom, and quit it. The minute it starts getting clingy, the minute it starts giving signs of being human lint, kick it out. Move on to the next victim. I see myself as you know being like kind of like a serial killer, but I never actually kill anybody. You know, I, I just commit one act after another. You know, and I leave my telltale signs, and then I split. That's what you want to do. I mean, come on. It, it, it was what I'm saying, all that unreasonable play. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. You are so yummy. Damn. Oh, really? If only you knew. Oh, if only I knew. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show from Los Angeles. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's our telephone number. Hi, you with Tom again. Yes, the San Jose Mercury News with their tips for people who've just gotten divorced. <laughs> uh -huh. Let's say hello here to Julie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Yes. Um... I, I just had a comment for you. Um, I just started listening to your radio show probably about a couple months ago because my boyfriend likes to hear it. But half of the crap that you say is just BS. All right. What is BS? It's like, okay, you have so much against people being together. And like you said, you don't call yourself single. And it's just... What do you have against people that are together? I have nothing against people who are together. Do whatever you want to do. Yeah, I'm giving the guys advice that will make them happier. Yeah, but it's just the advice you give them. It it doesn't go like that. It's like sure it if does. you're trying to give them advice, well, give them good advice. If What's wrong not, with my advice? Well, one time I heard when you when you put this guy on blast with his girlfriend that, I mean, she wasn't using protection, and you went off and told him, oh, yeah, did you know your lady wasn't using protection? I think that's their own business. Oh, so in other words, it's okay for a woman to lie to her boyfriend and try to get pregnant. That's okay with you? No, but it's just... Well, you what know, was wrong with me telling him? I, he needs to know that. I know he needs to know that, but that's their own issue. Well, I, clearly, if she's lying to him and I have the information, he needs to get it. But, like, some of the advice you give is just, like... Like what? Okay, well, right now you're talking about um, the divorce, about just hit it and quit it. Okay, right. so what, what happened is if you go out with this, with this girl, say, and, you know, you want to hit it and quit it, but she falls in love with you. Nope. What do you do there? Well, that's the trick. You want to stay uh, in the thing only as long as till she starts getting clingy, and then you want to boot her ass out. So you haven't. So you're gonna come and tell me that there's not one time where you have fallen in love again besides your four, four ex-wife? I'm I'm not going to tell you that. I'm going to tell you that I'm done for the time being. I'm done. And and by the way, I'm done with people living with me. I'm done with people having the key to my place. I'm done with people sharing my bank account. It's not happening. Well, yeah, that those are your mistakes, and that's what happened with you. 
but don't try to give advice. It's to, not a good idea for anybody to do those because things. Because you're trying to put the you're trying to put us females down. You're I'm not putting you down. Why do you are you saying that women should have the key to men's apartments? No, yeah, I say no. I mean, yes, yeah, they're, they're living together. I mean, if they have, they shouldn't be living together. Why not? Because first of all, uh, when you live together, you give up all of your freedom. That's not true. Yes, it is. No, it's not. I have... still let my boyfriend go out with his friends and his cousins. No, I mean, I free... go out with my friends. freedom to do what he wants, like have sex with other women. Oh, yeah, but he has a child now. He has to stop and think about responsibility. Wait a minute. He has a child with who? With my boyfriend. You have a child with your boyfriend. How old are you? Me? Yeah. I'm... I'm pretty young. How old are you? I'm pretty young. How old? 19. 19? Why are you having babies at 19? Because I wanted a child. That way I'm... Did he want a child? Children. Did he want a child? Yes. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. Yeah, how do you know he wanted a child? Because he kept on asking me. He told you he wanted you to get yes. pregnant. Well, he's insane, and he's the kind of person who needs my advice. No, because uh, then that's how divorces come around. You're not married. Huh? Why are you worried about divorce for? No, I know I'm not married, but when the time comes of me getting married with him, it's like, I won't... I what do you mean when the time comes? Him. When will that time be? That time will be pretty soon. When? Probably about in two years. Why are you waiting two years? Because um, we're waiting to get financial situations ready and... Why didn't you do that before you had a baby? Because I wanted a baby and he wanted a baby. But you can't afford a baby. Yes, we can. Really? So, what college are you going to? So far, we have supported our daughter. What college are you going to? Just, you know, you're, you're trying to make us ladies look bad. So, you you are, you in other words, you're not going to college. Isn't that right? Huh? You are not attending college, are you? Oh, are yeah. You? Yeah, what, what? Oh, so you're going to community college in the 13th grade, and what are you studying? I'm studying to be a teacher. A teacher? What do you know? You're going to teach people what? what? You know math? How to get knocked up as a teenager? No. Math. You're going to teach math. What do you know about math? A lot. Really? Like what? Everything, basically. Really? Yes. Really? So you know algebra, geometry. Uh, you do, do you? Trigonometry? Yes. You know trigonometry? I'm going to school. I thought you said you already know it. But I'm going to school to to learn how to teach other people. But if you don't know anything about math today, what what makes what makes you qualified to be a teacher if you yourself don't know about math? What qualifies me to go and show what I know already to other people? You don't know anything. Okay. And and by and the you way, you know a lot, but that's why when you when up. you are done when that's you are done when up. you are done with community college, darling. Uh, what real college will you go to? I have no idea. What do you I'm mean you have no idea? That. I'm thinking about that. You're thinking about it. what college could you ever get into? Look, well, my sister went to USC. Getting that long I'm not talking to your sister. I'm talking to you. Why not? If she can make it into USC, so can I. With oh, the child. Oh, you really think so? Oh, your sister uh, got knocked up too? No. Yeah, well, that's, there's a big difference there, having a baby and not having a baby. Oh, so you're going to tell me that I can't go to USC because I have a child? I'm telling you, you're going to have a very hard time. That's right. Mm. That's right. USC is a tough school. Okay. I mean, what do you know from going to a college like USC? You go to a community college. Okay. You know what Chris Rock said about community college? They call it community college because everybody in the community can get in. Okay. But what if you ever got into a college like USC? And I doubt, based on this conversation, that you would uh, that you would be uh, 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 admitted to USC. But if you ever got admitted, at, how in the world would you ever do the homework and the research and the reading when you've got a baby? It's how? called daycare. Ooh, that's good for the kid, too, dumping them off in daycare. That's great. It's called school for them, too. Yeah, well, how old is your kid? My kid is two-year-old. So you got knocked up at 16. Yeah. Oh, that's great. I wanted to have a baby. You were 16. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, that's why you have to go to community college. You can't go to USC now. Because what happened to the last couple of years of high school being knocked up? I graduated. 
Yeah? How were your grades? Oh, they were up there. Oh, they were, huh? That's why you're going to community college? Yeah, that's a starter. Why don't you, why aren't you going to USC? Because I want to try the community college before I go to a harder subject. I want why? to challenge myself to get there. Because you're not smart enough to go to USC? If that's what you think so. Uh, it certainly seems that way. But anyways, I was just commenting about how some of your comments are just BS. It's just how would you're you making know? Us, okay, you're just making us look bad. You look bad that, on your own. You don't need me to do that. Oh, I'm not asking you for your opinion against me. I'm just letting you know. About how could I make? How could I make you couples, look bad? But how could I make you? You just you just want them. What, to what you have you're done? Happy. What you you're not married, by the way. So I don't know why you take this so personally. And on top of that, and by the way, would your parents think of you getting knocked up at 16? Did they think that was a good idea? They supported me. Did they? No, they supported you because you were pregnant and they had no choice. What did they think of you getting knocked up? I don't know. They hated it, and you know it. I don't know. Oh, you don't? Let's don't call them know. right I now. I sit there and ask my mom and my dad, oh, what do you guys think? Let's call them right now and find out. They're both working. That's okay. They can take a little break. It'll just take a minute. Um, I, I want to find so. out how happy they were. When you came home and said, Mom, Dad, I got knocked up because I want, I'm 16 and I want a baby. And you're telling me your parents were excited about that? No, but they were all right with it. Because no, no. it was my decision. They had no choice. That doesn't mean they were all right with it. Right? Yeah, they were. Yeah, yeah. So you think they were happy? Yes. Well, why didn't you do it when you were 14 or 12 or 10? I, was, I wasn't thinking like that at that age. Oh, I see. Hang on a second here. Michelle, what did you want to say to Julie? Well, the first thing, I am a high school math teacher. I did get my degree in math. And, honey, you are so far from being a math teacher, it's sad. If you didn't have the sense at 16 to know not to have a kid before you were financially stable. You have no business trying to teach other kids how to how to be, let alone math. Uh, if I can teach, I mean, I can teach someone on math. I mean, that's my subject. I'm going to teach them. I'm not teaching them about getting knocked up, about get, going to get other people knocked up. Okay, so let me ask you this. How much does it cost to raise a baby per month? Um, do you have, do you have a budget? Do you keep track of the monies that it costs? Do you keep track of how much you have to save to keep your life going? No, I just spend whatever my daughter Hey, okay, honey, then, you're not keeping track of your own numbers. How are you going to teach another kid how to work with theirs? So I can sit down and concentrate. You I don't concentrate on, my, on growing I don't concentrate up. On my budget. Not what Tom Lakis is telling you. Not what anybody else is telling you. You are 19. At 19, I was in community college. I was going to transfer. I had no business being a parent. And I knew it. That's why I was focusing on me. Before I was trying to live with anybody, before I was trying to get married, I was focusing on me. Well, I want to focus on myself and my daughter because I wanted a daughter and I got my daughter. Okay, and having a child is a beautiful thing. Nobody is saying that's a bad thing. However, I say it's a bad thing when old. you're 16. When I'm you're sorry? 16, when you're 16, having a child is a bad thing, and it's having time a it's time a as thing. a society that we start saying that and stop being such pussies about it. Having a child at 16 is not a great thing. It's a bad thing. What I'm saying is having a child is a beautiful thing as long as you're ready for it. And yes. obviously she was not. No, but she's agreeing. But she's agreeing that, oh, it was great because I, have, I got my daughter now. Like, like she went out to the store and got a washing machine. I got my daughter now. Oh, she she, she hung up. Oh, jeez. She hung up. It hurts, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, she's ovulating. It's time to get back to the bedroom. You know what I'm talking about. Who's it? Tom Likas. Tom Likas. 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 We all like to party on the Tom Likas show. You we know. do not go out and bang our wives, oh, sisters, yeah, or our girlfriends, right. sisters on the Tom Likas show. We don't do it. No matter how much we party, we know better. It's the Tom Likas show.
It's the Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Mindy, how about Good day, Professor. How are you? Doing great. Good for you. I am way off in Arizona in a little tiny community, and I am actually so happy that you're on the air. And I will tell you why. I think there's a cultural shift in our in our culture that needs to happen, and I think you're on the forefront, and I appreciate what you're doing. Um, I have two kids, 17 and 11. I'm a single mom. I am 41. I am off the market, and I've been off the market for seven years. I don't think it's appropriate for me to be dating, banging, having a great time when I'm trying to raise two kids. What I don't get, and this article that you just read is what infuriates me because it encourages people to do just that, to place your kids on a secondary And the guys your age, my age, are so freaking desperate. They drive me insane. They're constantly trying to rescue me, save me, be a father to my kids. It's like, dude, not dating, off the market. Go find something cuter younger. There's plenty out there. Knock yourself out. You know, I'm not interested in getting married. And I love that you said I'm unmarried because I'm going to start saying that now. I'm no longer single. I'm no longer divorced. I'm unmarried. I'm good with that. Yeah, because single sounds like desperate. Yeah, it does. And, and you know, it, and that seems to be the thing. And there's so many of my town kids, and that's I call my town kids, not my two kids, but, you know, living in a small town and being very active in the school and all that, but I've done. I have a lot of extended children who call me mom and who hang out with us, and a lot of them are boys. And I've turned several of them on to the Like a Show. They listen online. They've even come over to my house to listen. Um and I just want them to hear you, <laughs> you know. And one of them's hooked up in a relationship and living with his girlfriend. I'm like, oh, Jack, sweetie, please. And he, he's listening to you. He's not quite decided to break the tie there, but he's listening. And I just, <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying. You know, my one, my oldest is now headed to a four-year degree. And I told her, get your life together. Be self-sufficient. Support yourself. Go have a great time with the guys. That's not a problem. I've given her all the sex talks. She, she absolutely will not get pregnant. I know that child. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, she's not. She And it's her responsibility. I said, you can't trust the guy. There's no way. You do not believe that he's going to use a condom or it's going to be safe. You take care of yourself. You don't need a baby. You're not going to make it to college if you have a baby. She understands that the youngest is in the same path. She's got the idea. She's only 11, so we cut her a little slack. Um, they both think you're a little harsh. <laughs> They they get irritated that mommy listens to you. Yeah, well I am but, harsh because that's what it takes. Well, yeah, I agree, and that's what I and they and it's funny because the, the conversations that start at home because of you are great, and that's why I wish more families would listen to you because you are harsh. But I don't have a problem with that because the conversations that we have, it's like yeah, he's a little harsh, and I, Julie, Julie, honey, <laughs> please keep listening. <laughs> <laughs> Please, just keep listening, baby. You'll catch on. Because, I mean, now that she's had the baby, she's got to change, and she's got to try to do something. And we've got a few kids in our little town that have had babies. You know, and it's like, oh, honey. Okay, now you got to try something different. you got to try, you know, to work yourself out. But, you know, I, I, I have a guy who literally, this is a great story, just bought a house here in town with the intent for me to live there, me and my kids. What? And I went, Huh? He called me out of the blue. He says, oh, I put an offer on a house. Will you come look at it with me? And he's a friend. And he's several times tried to hit on me, several times. Tried. It's like I keep telling him, no, dude, friends, good friends. That's fine. No, 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 not dating you. No, no, no. And, uh, oh, this is a perfect house for you and your kids, and I'd love to see you there. And it's like, I own my house. It's not a huge house. It's a little house. And we have horses, and we have our thing, and we're good. And I, my job is to get these kids off to college and then take care of myself for the rest of it, and they're self-sufficient. We don't, no, no, no. But, yeah, he did. And I, I just don't get the, I'm going to say, 40-plus guys who I think read articles like you just read and go looking either to rescue or they're so desperate they have to have someone living with them. And I don't understand that. I don't understand why anyone needs anyone to live with them. Um, I think it's so much better to, to get to know yourself. To, yeah. to feel uh, what it's like to be alone, to, to have conversations with yourself, uh, both in your head and out loud. Oh, yeah. My uh, dogs run because I'm always talking to myself. I, I agree wholeheartedly, and I, and I think that it's a cultural shift. I got married young at 22, planned and had a baby at 23, got divorced at 23, got married again. I, doctor told us we were playing for free. <laughs> Guess what? I had a second kid. Doctors lie. <laughs> But, and when that divorce happened, and we were married for 10 years, and there was some pushing and shoving, 
that said, you know, I'm not going to not going to do that. Not right. Kids. Bye bye. Got to go. And that's when I said, you know what? There's a cultural shift. We don't need to be married. I grew up with that. Oh, you got to grow up, find the guy, get married. And and articles like that perpetuate that belief when really in today's culture, women can be as strong and self-sufficient as a guy. Well, the worst thing is articles encouraging people to jump out there again and next time don't make the same mistake. The, the mistake was getting married. Right. Right. And I, but there's exceptions to the rule. There are people who I know that are married and have great relationships and all that. And, but I think those decisions can be made when you're in your 30s. That's when I think you can make a sound decision about whether you really want to share your life with somebody. I don't think that decision can be made soundly any time before that. And even after 30, do you really need to? You've lived yourself this long. Are you okay with that? You know, I mean, I think those are – those. but in your 30s, guys, in your 30s, when you're 19 and how – oh, my God, having a baby at 19 – you know, I don't know. I, yeah. I appreciate what you're doing. I'm glad, and I, I think it's a cultural shift that there there needs to be some brain thinking, and folks need to look at how our culture has viewed marriage. And at one time, and I think you've said this on your show, there was a time when it was necessary to be married, when you raised the kids to work the farm and you raised the kids to do the thing, you know, and that's why people stayed together for forty and fifty years. They're not staying together like that anymore because you don't need to. So if you that's don't right. need to. Now it's now it's a, a, a now it's very much a choice. And the only reason to get married is if you need to. I think there are some people who want to and do a good thing, but I think that's the exception. I think our cultural shift is if you don't need to. Definitely don't. I, and I definitely, if you're going to get married, do it when you're 30 and after that, and then make that decision. You know, I do think two parents in a home with a kid is a good thing, but I don't think people should have kids until their 30s. I mean, you know, I, I, it just is, it, you're more mature. You're more able to focus on the kids. I stayed. I was very fortunate. I stayed home with my girls until I got divorced. And even then, I was very fortunate and able to perpetuate my job out of my home. So I've been able to be very focused on my kids. They're self-sufficient. They're very aware of what's going on in the world. And they have absolutely no intention of getting married anytime. <laughs> Good points, Mindy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate the call. Brandon on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Big fan. I've listened to you since I was 18. I'm now 24, and I just want to say real quick that I, that you changed my life, first of all. But hey, um, you know, I see this all the time at work. At a lot of at a lot of corporations, um, it's like I was talking to a female coworker and referring to some guy there, and she didn't know who I was talking about. And finally, she's like, "Oh, the guy with the baby." And then she spent minutes explaining how cute the kid is. And I'm just thinking, I'm thinking. Oh, right, the guy with the baby, the irresponsible guy who's now has to deal with the mother his entire life and now has to, um, you know, face the hardship for that. So yeah. I'm definitely on board with you. Yeah, I'm, you know, I get so frustrated, especially when these little girls call in. I wanted a baby. Now I have my baby. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what she sounded like. It drives me insane. I mean, I definitely think we need to start getting that message across that, no, it's not okay to be to do that, to have a kid. Um, There's nothing beautiful about it. That no. kid deserves, kids deserve to be raised in a safe home, a clean home, to, to be well-educated, well-fed. They deserve that. And, and when you're a teenager, you're not capable. And it's not fair to be dumping that responsibility on your parents who have been waiting for you to leave home. Exactly. Exactly. Tom, like I said, I'm a big fan. You changed my life. Can you blow me up? Of course I can. Oh. You know, I, I have these conversations with you boys. I have these conversations with the, the, the young girls that call in here. <laughs> they piss me off. They don't give a rat's ass. A baby is an accessory, you know, like a handbag. Uh, they don't care about the quality of life that kid is going to face. Be it dumped off at daycare or dumped off with relatives or just dumped off in a kennel somewhere. Where, wherever teenage mothers dump their kids off. Pisses me off. It's pretty outrageous. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Or hear our show streaming live by going to our website, blowmeuptom.com. Click on the Listen Live button between 3 and 8 p.m. The Tom Likas Show.